Recently, a hospital in Nebraska cited widespread outrage after updating its hair policy to include no messy buns. Standard hair policies go back way over 60 years in the hospital. Most state clean, neatly groomed, natural colors, and short length. For those with long length defined as past the shoulders, a hair accessory undefined should be used to secure the hair away from the shoulders. Beards, mustaches, and sideburns should be clean and neatly groomed. Although challenged, many of us have always felt that hair policies were a target toward melanin cultures. In the 1960s, discrimination was brought with the wearing of natural hair of air froze. However, the first case did not appear until 1976 with Jenkins First Blue Cross Mutual Hospital Insurance against air froze. An entire decade after the first discrimination. Hair policies have largely been unchallenged by non-melanated cultures. Although for the past 60 years or more, melanin cultures have dealt with hair discrimination. It is this hair discrimination that led to updates in hair policies that singly targeted melanin cultures and cited these changes as warranted due to political stances. What were these political stances? That afros symbolized violence. Kippas symbolized hate. Hijabs symbolized terrorism. Dreadlocks symbolized unruliness. Braids symbolized unprofessionalism. And for those that had straightened hair but melanin skin, they were unnatural and wore weaves, which is not cited in the policy, but yeah, because we can't grow straight hair out of our heads. But that's neither here nor there. Let's stay on topic. For those of us that have been in this discriminatory hair policy fight for over 60 years, it does not escape us that our non-melanated counterparts have stood by and allowed us to be discriminated based on our hair. It is both karmic and comedic that after non-melanin women adopted our hairstyles, our headdress for sport and claimed it as their own creation, now find themselves the target of a hair policy. It comes as no surprise that the North American institution has targeted its standard of beauty's signature hairstyle with its smoke and mirrors policy. Nor does it escape us that he would use a woman to do his bidding. For my non-melanin sisters, our fight is your fight. Do better. Now, while I do believe that all hospitals should have a standard hair policy. I also believe that it should be rooted only in patient care, not in control, chaos, incompetency, and confusion. It should be generalizable across state lines. It should be clear, concise, consistent, and free of bias and ignorance. The purpose 
should be to decrease contamination to both the provider and the patient. The purpose should be to prevent interference of sight lines during patient care. The purpose should be to prevent possible use of your hair as a weapon knowingly or unknowingly from a patient. It should be developed by a group of patients as well as providers that is diverse in culture, race, and age at a minimum. Not solely by the North American institution, aka white men. But for now, I'll digress. Because if one thing's for certain and two things are for sure, when you go against the North American institution, the North American institution becomes threatened. And then the North American institution has to get rid of you at all costs.